In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Good morning, everyone. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And happy Father's Day, Father, and happy Father's Day to all of our fathers today. We honor and give thanks to God for our fathers, and we give thanks to God the Father for sending us His Son and the Holy Spirit for our eternal redemption and salvation together as one in His name. I love the Scripture. It's at one time simple and yet also profound. And its meaning is not just for those of us 2,000 years ago. It's also for us now across the ages spiritually. It transcends time and space and speaks to us now. Not just to our minds, but to our hearts. Because we must remember that Jesus Christ, the pre-eternal Logos, the second person of the Trinity, came down from heaven, emptied himself of all his power and glory, and became a human being, became a man, entered time and space to consecrate time and space, to ordain it, to give us direction, to lead us to salvation. And so therefore, if God became incarnate, then his word must come down from our minds and into our heart. Christianity is not an academic, sterile exercise. It's not just intellectual. It's real. It must be alive. We must make it alive. We must be the instruments of His glory as His living saints in this world now, to be His vessels of light as His children of the light. And so He chooses us now as He chose His disciples then. Today, the second Sunday after Pentecost, we learn of Jesus finding whom? Simple fishermen. And He went to them and He called them. Now, he didn't go to the royalty. He didn't go to the wealthy or the powerful. He didn't go to the educated. He chose for his first disciples simple fishermen. Think about it. God is all-wise, all-knowing, all-powerful. And he knows his creation. He created all of us. But he chose fishermen for a purpose. Think about it. Fishermen are very resilient and resourceful. We learn that they're cleaning their own nets. They're very tough too. And they don't give up. They have to get up early in the morning to get the best fish. They have to go further away from the shore, the safety zones, so to speak. Further out, taking more risk to get the fish. They're tough. They're used to the sun. They have tough hands, tough bodies. They get up early and they work all day, and they don't give up. They fished and fished and fished. They cast the net again and again and again, knowing that the Lord will provide. If they did not get any fish, they kept trying again, much like the farmer who sows the seed, knowing that the harvest is sure. The fishermen cast the net again and again to bring something home to his family, to support himself. These are the people that he chose. We know Peter and Andrew and James and John, the sons of Zebedee. And he chose them, and what did he say? He said, follow me. Very simple. Follow me. If we want to be his disciples, we can't just listen to his word. We must also give up everything that is important for him. And we must leave everything behind and follow him. Think about it. What did the Scripture say? Very simple, but also very specific by the Sea of Galilee. They left behind their nets, their ability to make a living, their ability to feed themselves and the family, and they left behind their father. They went forward. They left the past behind them for a new life and a new beginning in Christ, and they followed Christ. My brothers and sisters in Christ, they weren't perfect men. They were hardworking, resourceful, and resilient, but they weren't perfect. And neither are you and me perfect. But we all have something to offer to Christ and to his people. And we must listen to his word, 
be obedient, and the Greek for listening also is the root for obedience, and follow in his path, follow in his commandments, follow in his teachings, follow in his light, follow in his way as the people of the way. The Christians were first called the people of the way before they were called Christians. And we're called also to be his children of light, his light. For he is light of light, true God of true God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today's morning gospel, and remember all the morning gospels are resurrectional on Sundays. And the priest reads it from the side of the altar as if he's proclaiming it like the angel at the side of the empty tomb after the stone was rolled away. We hear of the woman coming to anoint Christ. They came with faith. They did not know how they are going to get past the Roman guards. They didn't know how they are going to get past the sealed tomb. They didn't know how they could possibly roll away the stone from the tomb. But they came anyway at great risk. And they got up early in the morning to do their duty, just like the fishermen getting up early. And they went with faith. And God provided, just as the fisherman and the farmer knows that God will provide the catch or the harvest. And he sent his angel to roll away the stone from the tomb. And the angel, the messenger of God, sent the message to the woman. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified one. He is not here. Behold the place where he laid. Now go to his disciples and... Peter, and tell them to meet them in Galilee. Galilee is where Jesus first called them. Galilee is where they had the fond, beautiful memories. Galilee was where he ministered to them and taught them and broke bread with them. Galilee was a safe place of remembrance and nostalgia. He said, go to Galilee and you will find him there. Imagine how distraught they were that Jesus was crucified, murdered, and buried. Imagine the beautiful news from the angel. And imagine the beautiful news to Mary. Whereas once before her conception, the angel of the Lord said, Hail, most favored one, you will be with child of the Most High. Imagine that glorious news then. And now again, at his empty tomb, again, God sends his angel with more glorious news. You seek Jesus of Christ crucified. He is not here. He's resurrected. Go and tell his beloved disciples who are worried and anxious that he is risen. And go and meet him in Galilee. And go especially to Peter who's mourning his three-time denial. Tell him that his Lord has resurrected from the dead on the third day. This message speaks to us as disciples now, today. Jesus Christ, resurrected from the dead, and we know in Christ, even death no longer be feared. Death does not define us. For us in Christ, death is a passage, a new Passover from this world to the heavenly kingdom. Death is now a new beginning. It's not a finality. It's a new beginning and a never-ending beginning in Christ for he destroyed death for us so that we may have eternal life with him. Now, my brothers and sisters in Christ, as children of the light, as people of the way, as his modern-day disciples, let us follow him and go forth into the world to proclaim this message of eternal salvation to those who have no hope, to those who are despairing like the disciples And let them know, fear nothing. You may feel you're an orphan, but you're not. Because you have a Father above in heaven through Jesus the Son. Fear nothing. You may feel you have no mother. But through Jesus the Son, you have the mother of all humanity. Fear nothing. You may think you're alone. But for those who believe, you have all the saints. Fear nothing, though you're suffering and are afraid. Because Jesus Christ suffered everything for us to glorify us. Do not fear death, because in Christ you have everlasting life. And to him we do all glory, honor, and worship, to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise.